Okay, I'm back. Um, now I'm going to talk, talk about Git workflow. So there, there are a lot of different workflows you can use with Git and GitHub. Um, I'm just going to talk specifically about what we've decided to do and uh, show some examples. Um, I do want to bring up another diagram. Yeah, there's this post. So I built that diagram that you just saw, but that was heavily, heavily based on this article called a successful Git branching model. Um, and in this article, Vincent lays out basically how things are done. Um, you have your develop branch, which is has the latest and greatest features. You have master, which represents what's in production right now, what are users actually using. You have feature branches, which are branched off of, off of developed to implement specific features. And then you also have hot fixes. So a bug is found in production, but you're not ready to release other features into production. So you have a branch specifically for fixing bugs. Um, the way all this works, I'm going to show with actual Git, but I do want to use my diagram here. So the main idea here is that uh, work can be done in parallel. So if you have multiple features that your developers are working on that don't all depend on each other, uh, and even if they do, they could be happening at the same time, but they can happen in parallel. So uh, here we have feature branches. So basically, any piece of work that a developer is going to do they create a branch based off of the develop branch using a specific name. So um, in our case, I have ex-002. So this is example 002. If you look on our Trello board, uh, we have a power up where every single card has a specific identifier. So CA36, CA38, CA48. Each thing has a unique ID. And the idea is when you create a feature branch, you name it specifically after the card that you're working on. So uh, in this case, if I was working on the history page, I would create a feature branch called CA41. OK, so I created that branch, and then I start work. I work on it, work on it, work on it. And uh, then I uh, create a pull request and say, hey, this work is finished. Please review it and then merge it into the develop branch. So the way we have it set up is develop is the latest and greatest features. This has everything that has, has ever been written for this app. It's in the develop branch. Um, this may not be what the user sees because we could be working on new features that haven't been deployed yet, but this is everything, latest and greatest. And if you check out any of the GitHub repos, so if you look at app mobile, you can see that actually by default, we have our develop branch as the main branch here. Um, and basically what that means is when someone clones this repo down, they're going to get the develop branch by default. And then also when someone opens a pull request, it'll be against the develop branch by default. And that's... Um, what we've chosen to do because we want develop to be all of the latest and greatest things. Um, the next thing is releases. So let's say um, all three features, A, B, and C, have been merged into develop and they now exist on the develop branch. But we want to deploy. We want to create a release from there. So what I have here is we would branch off of the latest develop, which has A, B, C, and create a new branch called version 1.0.0. And this is going to be our first version, so we create it and then merge that into our release branch. So you can see on GitHub, we also have a release. Uh, well, we called it staging here. But basically, um, this is right before we're about to merge into master, which is production only. We, we bring things here to make sure that everything's working and good to go. And um, so that would have been merged into staging, and that creates a specific release. Then after, oops. Um, after it's been merged into release, we then set up a tag and a, a merge to get ready to merge into master. And the idea is anything that gets merged into master is ultimately what is deployed. Um, we are going to set up some automation where basically anything that gets brought into master will instantly deploy to the, the mobile app. So the moment we merge in, anyone that has our mobile app downloaded will get a pop-up that says, hey, version 1.0.2 is ready. Would you like to download it? Um, so we'll have that set up. And uh, these are basically just like swim lanes that protect things from going from one place to the next. So protecting feature branches from develop are code reviews and pull requests. So before anything can be merged in, we make sure that multiple people have eyes on it. Um, and then going from um, a version branch into release branch, we make sure like, is this working? Is this what we want to actually test as a release? That's good. 
And then before we merge into master, we make sure, okay, is the production environment ready to accept this latest merge? Like, have we set up all the environment variables? Is everything good to go? And then we can merge it in and it, it all, it all works. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a, a wonderful cycle of uh, development. The other thing to mention here are potential bugs or hotfixes. So let's say that, okay, ABC got released, but then we started work on feature D and feature E. And uh, both of those have, uh, are like ready to be merged into develop, but they're not exactly ready for production just yet. So we don't want to release those. What we can do is create a branch for a specific bug fix. We would branch off the previous release. So this arrow is coming from ABC, but really it would be coming from version one release. So we branch off of it and then we merge that bug fix into it. And that bug fix is what we push into releasing and to master. Um, this allows us to not have to push all of the features because they may not be tested yet. So in this scenario, we're saying that D and E are untested features that were not ready for production yet. So we branch, we create a branch that doesn't include those things, includes the fix, and we release that to production. And now our users can benefit from that bug fix. Um, and then after that, that F also got merged into develop, develop. So develop has everything. It has features D and E and the bug fix for F. And then this, eventually we would create a new release um, and then push ultimately push that to production. Um, this also shows using semantic versioning. Um, if you're not familiar with that, you can check out semver.org. And basically, uh, if you've ever installed anything from NPM, you've seen semantic versioning. It has three numbers, the two dots in it, uh, but it actually means something. So the first number is the major version. And typically you only ever change the first number if there are breaking changes in your library or in your source code. Um, in our case, we're, we're not really creating something for someone else to consume. Like we're creating a mobile app. So I'm guessing it's going to stay at version one for a while. Uh, the minor version or the second one here is for new features. So anytime you add something that's not a bug fix or a hot fix, it's a new feature, you increase this number. And then the last one is a patch. So uh, anytime there is a bug fix that's like backwards compatible and it's really just fixing things, you up this specific number. So we're following that specific versioning when we create our uh, release branches and we create our tags. So this is how it all works. I am now going to show it a real live example of how we would do this with GitHub, but I'll do that in the next video. See you there.